Hello, hello, my friends. It is Ondo. And welcome back to the Knights of the Nerd Republic. You know what to do. And stay profitable. The Nerd Academy podcast is released weekly at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, available on our website at www.thenerdacademypodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the Nerd Academy podcast, where every donation allows us to bring you more exciting content every week. Hello there and welcome back to Knights of the Nerd Republic, the show where your favorite nerd stock all things about the galaxy far far away i am back from my little breaky uh first of all uh there's lots of people i got to meet at the uh roosevelt's meetup at the uh atlantic city beer fest uh so to any of the lovely people who are tuning in after i got a chance to talk to anybody out there hello welcome to the nerd academy glad you're here hope you enjoy the content uh but we are here to talk about the two most recent episodes of obi-wan kenobi and we are joined by, as per usual, we have Connor Chikiti. Hello, everyone. I one of his eyes. Yes. Uh, guys, it's a very special episode for two reasons, and it's both of the people who are coming up. It's a mic episode. <laughs> Hello. We got him back, boys. <laughs> yes, yes, Mike is here. Uh, I, I, I want to make this clear to Mike before I say this. This was... And I think you'll be happy that when I got your message, you were like, as I was getting ready to like start, where you were like, send me the link. And I sent it to you as I read your message. I went, oh shit. Um, and I hope you interpret that in the way that it is meant to be a compliment that it is like, oh damn, it's, it's going to go down because Mike is in play. Uh, but we have a very special guest, someone you guys have seen on the number one contender. We have the host of the Schmodown Rundown. My favorite host of the Schmodown Rundown, uh, Mr. Frank Janish himself. Hello. How's everyone doing? Great. It's, good. it's great to have you on a, another show in the network that isn't just movie trivia. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I reached out to you. I was like, hey, man, I, I want to talk about some Star Wars. I know you guys have a show. And um, by the way, I love that Hondo intro. That's amazing. Um, Thank you. Thank love you. that. Jim so Cummings jealous. is very sweet. I, yeah, yeah. I got to meet him at uh, Steel City Con a year ago, and I was like, "Hey, can you record this for me?" He's like, "Yeah, sure." And then just like went right into Hondo. It was really fun because getting to be in line for his autograph, I got to watch him just like hit a bunch of people with their childhood randomly in conversation. <laughs> like I saw this, uh, you know, our very own uh, Lexi also like talked to him, and I think he hit her with like a tigger voice and she burst into fucking tears oh, um man. and i saw a bunch of other people he did somebody he did that to somebody but with winnie the pooh a couple people ahead of me and i'm like <laughs> i'm here for your space pirate that clearly no one else is here <laughs> yeah, for yeah. but uh yeah no he was super sweet that's i, I, I always forget he does issue. tigger i don't yeah, know why tigger and mm. pooh tigger yeah, and pooh wow. talent talent but yeah it's great to be here uh love to talk about some kenobi because uh this this series is well, it, it's it's uh, interesting to talk about in the social circles that, that we occupy. That it is, and I am very excited to talk about all of it. Uh, I, 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 can, I can say right now, thus far, with the bias of I'm always more invested in Jedi stories anyway, uh, this has been my favorite thing in the Star Wars Disney Plus oeuvre so far, and I'm very excited to talk all about it. Uh, but first, a real quick word from our lovely sponsors at Sunday's Bloody Mary. Sunday'sBloodyMary.com is your spot for the most badass Bloody Mary accoutrement in the galaxy. They got the Spicy Caesar Mix, my go-to, uh, the award-winning Spicy Caesar Mix. Uh, they also have a mild and a vegan mix if you are not a Spice Lord or if you don't like animal product. They're back with some brand new uh, pickled garnishes with their dilly beans, okra, and asparagus. They got merch like shot glasses and apparel. So go to sundaysbloodymary.com slash shop. Use code TNAP, T-N-A-P, at checkout, 
you get 10% off your order, and you help your favorite nerds while you do it. And before, last thing, I promise, before we jump into Obi-Wan Kenobi talk, uh, just because we weren't around last week to weigh in on it, uh, surprising to absolutely nobody, the worst people in the fandom behaved exactly the way we all knew they would. Um, I... It's, it's painfully predictable, and it's disappointing. And as myself, as friend of the show, Alden Diaz has said, and as Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, Ewan McGregor, has said, uh, if there is racism and bigotry in your heart, uh, you are no Star Wars fan. Uh, I, I think it is very clear and very obvious uh, that if you truly engage with the text and with the deeper meanings of this story those kind of beliefs have no place and you're not welcome here. And again, like I, I want to go all the way back. Our review of the first two episodes during our celebration coverage, Joel sat on the couch right across from me. and was talking about how much he is not a fan of Riva. And at no point was Joel a prick about it. I made fun of him because I like <laughs> to make fun of his opinions. Uh, but I do that to everybody here. Uh, even Frank, because he doesn't like Mike Kalinowski, and it's just well, a personality defect for him. <laughs> but uh, okay, okay. but anyway, there are ways to engage uh, in good faith and in bad faith. And again, to quote uh, other lovely gentlemen, I was listening to the episode of Force Center that Ken Knapsack and Joseph Scrimshaw did about uh, Chapter 3, where they were talking about the debacle that has happened uh, with all the usual players. And as I said, I think I think when when you're, when you're criticizing something that has become uh, bait for the worst part of the internet, the worst part of any fandom, you have to be careful with the language you use because you kind of, to use their words, prop the door open mm -hmm. for the bad faith criticisms. And I think that's very true. And uh, I just want to make it abundantly clear that if you're just kind of showing up and you're like, oh, let's see what their thoughts are. Uh, if you're among the people who are attacking Moses Ingram, sending her just hateful racist messages uh, and your complaints have anything to do with her sex or race, allow me to reiterate and speak uh, for everyone who's a part of this network. You're not welcome here or in this fandom. Fuck off. Yeah, indeed. But basically, yeah. like, it's just it's so it's frustrating i think is the word i can use it's painful so, it's, yeah. it's so predictable it's, it's predictably like, <laughs> frustrating like it's just why you gotta be racist you know it's really not hard it's really not we fought a civil war over this should have done it you know i'm not gonna get into that yeah, um, no, no, no 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 i i i think that metaphor got away from you at the end there <laughs> Wait, no it's right. just like mm, yeah, I don't it get it, man. But the thing I really, I really liked the one thing that I think was really evident was that I think it was a day or two days after Moses received all this unfortunate hate. You know, everyone started, you know, DMing her, DMing her. I DM'd her like, you know, hey, just really, I just DM'd her support, really. Yeah. I encouraged others to do the same. And then there was a lot of, tweets and hashtags in support of Moses Ingram, obviously the Star Wars, the official Star Wars Twitter account, yeah. as well as its other platforms, basically just going with the greatest tagline ever. There's more than 20 million species in the galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Don't be a racist in so many. And it's just funny seeing the usual suspects get miffed at that. It's like, yeah, what a shock. Um, A lot of if the boot fits. Yeah. A lot yeah, just like of that. that. A lot just like, of people just like a went, character, are... Just like a character in episode three of Kenobi that we'll get into. Um, but <laughs> um, she then posted like, the love is louder, it overflows, thank you. And it's like, yeah, yeah. fuck yeah, man. I, I, was just really ha I was just really glad that she knew that she had all this love sent her way. And that she Absolutely, like, absolutely. Frank, you were going no. to say something. Yeah, I was going to also, you know, echo that it's very uh, frustrating and disappointing um, that, you know, these so-called fans 
yeah, it's one thing to dislike a character. It's an entirely yeah. different thing to go after an actual person who's portraying a, a fictional character. Fictional characters, right? Um, and it, it's, it's disappointing that there are people out there that need to voice their displeasure in such hateful and non constructive way. There's, you know, there's nothing, nothing good comes from sending those types of messages. And that just speaks more to the people who are sending those messages than about anything else that's really going on and uh, pertaining to the show that is, and, um, just really unfortunate, but I'm also very glad that, um, the, the true Star Wars fan community rallied around Moses Ingram and everybody else who's, you know, even in the past, this goes back to, through many other actors uh, that yeah, have been involved absolutely. with the, the, the franchise. So, um, and and to see Star Wars, you know, official, you know, media uh, handles, you know, voice their support for Moses Ingram and, um, and support and, and denounce racism, I thought was really great to see. And I was very proud, you know, to see that. And so hopefully in the future, when someone wants to send that kind of message again to someone else, whoever it may be, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't happen, but you know, it, it probably will, unfortunately. I hope they think twice at least and, and realize yeah. nothing's gonna come of this. You're not, you know, there's no clicks in it for you. There's no fame in it for you. There's, there's nothing in it but the hate in that person's heart. And hopefully they can find some sort of solace uh, through whatever means that may be, because uh, putting out hate like that um, just doesn't isn't constructive. It doesn't do anybody any good. Absolutely not. And I think that you know, especially the the the, the, the zeitgeist of the Star Wars fandom right now is such <coughs> that you know everybody's celebrating like you know like like yes, the prequel kids have won. You know, because it could because this show even exists in the first place. Right. And I think there's something very weird and very frustrating about how so much of the the prequel kids finally won rhetoric is based around uh, the old heads shat on the prequels and tour Jake Lloyd and Ahmed Best and Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to, to Helen back. Mm hmm for that same group of people to be the ones who uh, lost their minds at the very sight of John Boyega in the first trailer for the force awakens, yeah. who bullied Daisy Ridley and Kelly Marie Tran off of the internet. You know, like you like, like these are the same people. History is a time is a flat circle and we learn fucking nothing. And there is something that is just so appalling about the same people who want to feign some level of, you know, oh, yay, we won doing the same thing it, uh, instantaneously. And there's a lot of other factors in the nature of, like, there being the weird fandom menace movement as a whole, which we're not going to get into here but er, today because I don't think any of us have the bandwidth for <laughs> it at this point, myself included. Um, so... Yeah, just don't be a prick and do better. And even though it would have been cool to see uh, Star Wars like as an institution, like you know Star Wars with the check mark next to it on social media, uh, have some base in its voice and defend the people who bring the story to life. As nice as that would have been to see, you know, in '99 in 2002 in 2017 and 2018 whatever uh i'm glad they're doing it now right. and i'm glad that like it, i think it sets a precedent that moving forward we're not just going to turn a blind eye to the fuckery and i right. don't think that we can afford to pretend it's not there anymore to begin with uh so yeah with all that said hello there that's fucking Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike. We never get to see you, so give me uh, just briefly before we jump into episode three and four. Your thoughts on the first two episodes leading into this? First, I mean, they were incredible. I was utterly amazed. I was transfixed. I think I got a little bit of the 
space monasticism that I desired. I wanted to see Obi-Wan struggling with stuff. I wanted to see him in exile on the desert planet. I wanted to see him be like a, like a desert father or something like that. And I was deeply impressed. And okay. Was Obi-Wan working on the crate dragon? That was the crate dragon, right? That eventually became the great bones out there. So the only reason why I don't think it is, is because the bones are in the clone wars movie. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yes. Could and that I'm, be another? And I'm, and I'm only knows? correcting you yeah. because Frank is here, and this is going to help my chances one day. Eventually, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Jared's just going. Jared's I, just listen, playing I 4D shill. chess I'm right now. Right. I'm a professional yeah. show. No, no, this is just playing 4D anybody. chess right now. I I love it. But as you say, Mike, I'm sorry. I was being an ass. Yeah, there was. I liked how he kept on uh, feeding his little EOB. I enjoyed the little that he wasn't quite in his little Adobe schmuck hut, hut yet. You know, his little bachelor pad out in the middle of the <laughs> by the Junlin wastes. You know, like he's just sort of he's starting out still on Tatooine. Like it's taken him ten years, but he's still barely acclimated. I mean, he still looks miserable. He's still deeply like depressed. Got that bad PTSD and. Uh, Okay, the one scene whenever, uh, you know, he returns to the hut, it might have been in the, what was the end of the first episode it had to have been, and he sees that cloaked figure Mm. in uh, the cave. I thought that was Qui-Gon. I I swore, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to see Liam. You know, he's going to do, like, the Han Force ghost thing where he, like, appears to be, like, normal and not like a ghost, but I was was disappointed that it was just Bale, but, you know, it's, Bale's fine, but... I think they're saving Liam for the, like the last episode. I, that's just the feeling I get. The what feeling you get? What? I, I just get the feeling that they're saving Liam for the last episode. Oh just... yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm starting to think they might do the thing where like, I don't know. Maybe the last episode will be like, it'll all be like from Obi Wan's point of view, like in episode four or at least a little bit. I don't... I don't know. I, I don't know if we'll hear his voice that. first. That Actually, no, that makes sense. That. We'll probably yeah. hear Qui Gon's voice first, and then like Liam Neeson. Show. I think that's Liam, all we're gonna get. I, Liam, uh, yeah. I only do. Uh, I only do movies, not TV shows. Neeson will show up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think this show is gonna probably blow its load in the last episode, in in, in regards to everything that everyone's kind of been like waiting for or asking for, because that's my we, we yes. haven't really. There's, there's some, yeah, there's some opportunities I think there have been in other episodes that we could, oh, they could have did this, and, oh, but they didn't do that, oh, I wish they would have, blah, 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 and I think the the optimist in me is like, maybe, I think they're going to save it for the last episode, and then everyone's going to be like, well, how come they didn't do this, the whole show would have been great, and it's like, well, maybe because there's not a whole show worth of stuff to do, and maybe this is how it works out best, I don't know, but the Qui-Gon thing yeah, like he's got a. I actually think we're gonna see oh, the yeah. forest goes. Yeah, like him actually went in and did and shot something. I don't know if that that probably didn't happen, but that's what I would. I you could fudge it. You could digitally do it. I don't know. Maybe they might. Yeah, they brought like Mark Hamill to basically walking around for uh you know Book of Boba Fett. So like they could do anything. So yeah. that that's really kind of my main hope of the whole thing, but. I don't know. I'm trying to think of what my main hopes for this show are. Like, I mean, it's, I don't know, just seeing Obi-Wan really, just like seeing Ewan McGregor up there, I think is utterly astounding. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. Like, I just, those first episodes, like, it felt like a religious service. Like, you know, there's Mandalorian, there's Book of Boba Fett, and then there's Kenobi. And that, this has just been so much of a, of a, the Church of Kenobi. Deal for me. <laughs> yes, uh, truly. Yeah. Yeah, the Church of Kenobi. Church of Kenobi, the Church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Space Jesus. I mean, I, I gotta say, like, Mike, to your point, watching those first two episodes, again, I was like on that couch right there, you know, the hearing him talk for the first time, I got I, I giggled. I yeah. giggled where he was just like, Chica. And I was like, ah! <laughs> you know, like, it was just like hearing him and he's like completely back in the character. Like, he, you know, it was like riding a bike for him. And also, I want to make a big shout out to Joel Edgerton. That guy's an, that guy's incredible. Oh, I mean, oh he's yeah, great. Played, he's played Ramses the uh, Second, Falstaff from uh, The King, uh, numerous other stuff that I can't even name. He's such he's so versatile. He's so so many different characters that that man can inhabit. He's 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 incredible, and 
I, I now I kind of hate to say this, but I can't wait to see more of Uncle Owen. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hate that guy, but like now that Joel Edgerton's doing it, like now that I saw like because I saw like God's uh, Exodus, Gods and Kings years ago when I was like <sighs> uh, like an older teenager, and then I saw The King back in like 2018 or 19 when that came out, hmm. and like Falstaff was incredible, Ramses the Second was incredible, but like I didn't even realize they were the same dude who was like in like who was there for like five minutes in, uh, you know, Attack of the Clones. It was outstanding. He He's, you know, he brought a lot of, like, power to, like, standing up to Reva. Oh, third I that love was, that, was, that scene. Know. I think that's my favorite Owen. No, that's my favorite Owen scene. He's like what America should be. Sort and of. It's <laughs> probably my favorite Reva scene. Hmm. Oh, I don't know about that. For me. For me, yeah. Yeah. literally, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good force reasons, sensitive yeah, because he could clearly hide his thoughts from other <laughs> force users. So him and Palpatine would probably get along very well, you know. Like I don't know. I think Owen is just like it's like D and D rules. You can't use like psychic abilities on barbarians. <laughs> you know, I think there was something going oh, on there with yeah, Owen like where he was just like, like there was enough yeah. genuine. Well, I don't fucking like the Jedi lady. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. That it worked. <laughs> and like, I was like, he's not lying. Like <laughs> he's not lying. He's just not saying that to get the way he said. I back. shoot vermin. That was very. I'd like to shoot him. It's. I don't like this that guy. Me, that part made me very angry. I was. I was like, he. He does have Jedi prejudice. He does, and it infuriates me every time I see it. I, but, I mean, he comes by it honestly. I can't. Yeah, but I still hate it. Like, oh I, yeah, it's more like, you know, I'd love to roast a little bit of him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, with that delicious pun, uh, <laughs> I I want to say I, I need to say, as the resident uh, Darth Owens Vader knob slobber. Uh, uh, I, I made the joke and the closer we got to Obi-Wan, the more I started to like really lean into it that I was like, you know what? I'm happy for all the Obi-Wan stands. My boy is back. Enjoy your show. Yeah. And like, I, I had this, like this experience where I was like super like, Oh, Ooh, Obi-Wan. Like so cool. Like this is such a fascinating like character study. And, you know, again, I love The Last Jedi, so this just feels like The Last Jedi, but with Obi-Wan now. So I'm like, oh, I'm loving all that. I'm loving all that. And then the end of episode two, but that smash cut to Vader in the back oh. to tank. And I went, oh, yeah, I'm not on Obi-Wan's team anymore. <laughs> Fuck him. Uh-uh, no, die. I'm, I'm team that guy again. I forgot who I came here for. Uh, and ep- episode three, holy God. Um, yeah. So... I understand. I, 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 so for those of you who are, this is, if this was your first episode, uh, go back to a Spencer and I did a special episode of the Versus series where we tried to, to predict who would win the rematch. And while I don't think this is the fight they've this been building, this definitely isn't it. Uh, uh, this is like when Rocky, you know, this is Rocky three, you know, he first. This is yeah, his first fight with Clever Lang. Yeah. This is yep. this is the first one that yeah. sets up. It wasn't even this a fight. It was a yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. A joke. Yes, yeah. that's that's a good assessment. I was Spencer and I. You know, one of our main things was trying to explain that, like, the way that we interpreted the Force is that in in the way that Obi Wan would have to use it in a mission, it's like a muscle, and when you don't use it, it atrophies and no matter how much bulk you build up, if you don't maintain it, it will go away. So the guy who used to be able to match the chosen one in like a telekinetic tug of war who shit whip general grievous through the air, all of the force feats you want to talk about throughout the movies and the clone wars and throughout all of Canon, this guy like looked like he almost popped the blood vessel trying to stop Leia from falling. And I was like, "Oh, you're like a homeless man. You're gonna get, yeah, you're gonna he get is. beat the hell up." Uh, and he lives and, in a cave for crying out loud. He is. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. he's a caveman. I mean, he is what like he is. He's a caveman. Is what he is. Doorbell, but uh, uh, but he 
you know, Spencer and I laugh and we watch the first couple episodes. So you're like, oh man, I feel like our prediction might be a little too accurate. I'm afraid now. Uh, and he got absolutely mollywhopped, and it was great. I it, okay. Oh my god. I thought even though it's been a week, I have all my thoughts in order, and I still don't. Dude, the like, fire that was so horrific. Like, yeah, Darth Vader in the day. I, I, yeah, I go back to 2012. People are like, oh, Disney's gonna, Disney's gonna like, you know, like Star Wars isn't gonna have teeth anymore. With Disney and then like Darth Vader just <laughs> the the kid. He like, snapped the neck. That's that's like, hey, <laughs> we're doing it right. And I was I was stunned that we saw basically an adolescent's neck snapped on yeah, Disney yeah. Plus of all of the platforms in the yeah. world. Like, are you kidding me? I was like, damn, that's that's hardcore. I'm not yeah, lie. oh, and we heard about Quinlan Voss. Yes, we did. <laughs> we certainly I, Quinlan Voss, who I was very much convinced was going to be played by Ice Cube. I thought Ice Cube Jr. was going to do it. So. I didn't. I didn't think so. I really didn't think so. Yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't buying into it, but. The moment we saw O'Shea in this episode and he wasn't playing Quinlan, I don't think we're going to see Quinlan in the show now. I think that may have been a little bit of a teaser for something down the road. Yeah. But I, I think probably I, I'm leaning towards Bad Batch just because we've seen him in that medium before. Yeah. And so I, I I doubt like Ahsoka or even a Mandalorian episode, but I but I think I definitely think they did set it up to where we will see him somewhere again. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just, I, I loved it so much that there's for Obi-Wan, he is in so many ways afraid of his own power in that, like he, he has not taken up his lightsaber. He has not touched the force in so long that there is a level of, you know, like Luke in the last Jedi of like, I don't do this anymore because yeah. when I did do this, it led to bad things happening. And the way that Obi-Wan is thrust into having to face Vader down and Star Wars is like poetry. It rhymes like the way that this is a, the, the, this first fight in chapter three is this amazing amalgamation of the battle of the heroes and what will be the last time they see each other on the death star in a new hope where it's Obi-Wan like, no, go, I'm going to go distract him, run. Yeah. Like, I will hold him off so you guys can run away. It was quite jarring, actually, to me, because we just had never seen Obi-Wan like that. And it was, personally, it was really jarring to be like, oh, man, this dude is just really down in the dumps, has no self-confidence, doesn't really know, he's so scatterbrained, it felt like, I'm just going to run, and this is all I know how to do, because I've, close myself off from the force and it's not you know i'm not he's not fully in tune to take on vader um in that in that scenario so it was really i was just like it was kind of like for me at least it was it was a little sad to see him like that i'm like oh that i mean that just because that i think further exclamated his how low of a point he's been at yeah and is also in terms of Vader, this is the most I've ever felt. This is the most Hayden Christensen's Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader have ever felt the same, if that makes sense. Like the dialogue Vader had, where he's like, you know, you should have killed me when you had the chance. What have you become? I am you what you made me. When you, me. Had the chance. you know, I every time I hear that, I just hear Ian McKellen and X Men. That's all I can say. You shouldn't uh, kill me when you uh, have the chance, Charles. Charles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only version of that line yeah, I can ever hear. That's true. That's good. Yeah. Um, I giggled a little bit. Now I have another one of my favorite villains who have said that now. But, like, just that line of dialogue, I am what you made me. Oh, like, I line. could hear Hayden delivering that. And it, it was it's just weird so with f- Hayden in the suit. Like that's just fascinating in and of itself. Like that's yeah. right there. That they, there's they, and there's some body language cues where you can definitely tell it's Hayden. Like there are people have done like the side by side gifts of Hayden's like power walk. Oh yeah. Where like well, especially really, like, compared to like older like the uh, what was it David Prowse and because that was also him in the suit for uh, three right 
No, no. Mm-hmm. Hayden was in Hayden the Super was in the, Six. Yeah, Hayden was in the Super Three. He was yeah. in the Super Three. Okay. Yeah, for those like only there's only a couple scenes where he's in it, but he's in the suit. It's him. Yeah. He had to beg George to do it, but it's him. Because he, he looks he's a, tall enough. He's, he's a little bit. Enough. He's got like the broad shoulders for it, so he does. But he is a little bit more slim. He's not as he doesn't fill out yeah. the suit as as much as I think these. These doubles are doing in the show because honestly, I don't know, based on what we've seen so far, how much of it's been Hayden in the suit, because it just when you look at what you're this Vader in Kenobi, and then you juxtapose that to how we see Hayden at the end of Revenge of the Sith, like those are slightly different costumes, but the build itself doesn't really, unless they padded you know the suit for him or whatnot. Also, he's not that tall, right? There's like there was a he shot is. where he's, he's like, like, foot. like he's six, like what is he like six three or something? Let's find Here out, dude. It's true, but I think like the Vader uh, stunt doubles and going back to David Prosser are like at least seven feet. So there, I mean, like that's yeah. I think I mean, the a Vader difference. stunt doubles were like both like six seven. Well, that's the thing. How many stunt doubles were there for Vader? Because I thought it was just like David Prowse and in, what? that was it. In the original trilogy, there was. He is six foot even. Uh, you're right. Uh, there was Prowse who did the body and starting an empire. Uh, the stunt coordinator was Darth Vader as a lightsaber duelist. And then there was Sebastian okay. Shaw for the unmasking. Wasn't there another Vader for like the special edition that in Empire, there was like that one shot. He's on Cloud City. Yes. And he's like repairing my like, shuttle. There's a, yeah. is that another, yeah. another guy, right? I th- I think so. I think that that also might be a redubbing. Oh, okay. because in the movie it's like uh, something something prepare my shuttle, and then in the special edition it's. Uh, well, I'm just talking about the guy in the suit. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, exactly to your point though. Like, there's all those like weird insert shots that we don't that occur in weird spots. Um, no, I think we have seen Hayden a little bit. Obviously, there's the scene where like Obi Wan's yeah, like force yeah. hallucinating uh, Anakin on the hill. That, I think was, the, that was amazing right there. That, that was, was great. Like, that was great. I didn't even know who that was at first. I thought that was like something different. I, I didn't I, I thought that was just some Jedi who's like, oh another Jedi, but that was ooh, ooh. Real yeah. quick real quick though about like Hayden. Um because you know they've said well oh, Hayden's gonna be in the show a lot and and he's gonna be in the suit. I kinda wish they didn't say that. I don't mind that he's not in the suit, but I I feel like my eye is like looking for Hayden to be in the suit and it's not registering as Hayden in the suit. Now I might be wrong. It might be all Hayden, maybe for all I know, but I'm pretty sure it is all Hayden. Yeah. It, but I know that there has, there, there's other doubles for, for Vader on the show. Um, I forget their names. There's like two other, there's like two yeah. other guys. There's two I others think the, and a yeah. Vader movement coach. Yeah. Which so, I love. I think the Hayden check is going to be cashed. In the whenever the big rematch happens, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, because I think that helmet's coming off. Like I think, like I think we're gonna get gonna knock the helmet off. I think we're gonna get a very the Force Unleashed, very uh, Rebel season two, where like the helmet gets fucked up Mm -hmm. and it's Anakin's face, and then and honestly, I think I think it's gonna get even more frightening at that point. Because no, no more is it, you know, big, scary Darth Vader behind yeah. the helmet saying menacing shit. It's going to be a dude with a face being yeah. like, you should have killed me. Now I'm going to kill you. Um, that Do you wonder, I, now that I think, I think about it, um, because there's two episodes left, do you, Jared, do you think that they're not final, but like final duel in this show, at least. Do you think this duel will tie into uh, the return of the Jedi line of Obi-Wan, of Obi-Wan once thought as you did? Or I mean, I think eventually do? Obi-Wan's going to, I mean, I think, I think they have enough plausible deniability as is for that line. I think that you can make Obi-Wan once thought as you did being him trying to reason with him on Mustafar, I think it can simply yeah. be him going, "What happened to you?" That like, like just that initial, like clearly, Obi Wan does not want this to be a conflict. I think it's already there. I think you could absolutely try to have Obi Wan attempt to reason with him still. 
uh, because I think it's in his nature. But I think with what they have now, you have pardon me, you have your pickings of what Obi Wan was thought as you do means. Yeah, I think from any interaction that they have between now and Return of the Jedi, or I guess A New Hope rather, I think Obi Wan would would always be trying to get to get to the Anakin, get to find the Anakin. And so yep. it doesn't necessarily have to be in their final matchup before a new hope, because I don't know if you believe the rumors of maybe there's a second season as, as Ewan has talked about potentially wanting to do. And so you could further then see another, inter- I mean, if they did a second season, I would like to think there'd be another Vader Obi-Wan interaction in a, in a rumored second, second season. So I think there's multiple opportunities to, to, keep fleshing out that line of obi-wan once thought as you did because once or twice like sure like yeah but if the, the guy's always running into him and he's always like you're not this isn't you there's still good in you like it's like yeah okay obi-wan eventually you, you have this, to eventually you know? yeah i think you run into the same problem that happened in legends all the time where people kept wanting to write stories about han and lando before the original trilogy happened and every han and lando story had to end with Lando being mad at Han. Sure, yeah. Every story had to end with reason for Lando to be like, you got a whole lot of nerve showing up here. Like, right. you had to, like, you, so, like, every, so if, we keep trying to tell a story where Vader and Obi Wan cross paths between Sith and A New Hope. Like, Vader has to be convinced that, or he doesn't have to be convinced that Obi Wan's dead, but that's my. You know, I don't see the show ending without Obi Wan faking his death. That like it can't end without that, and it can't end without some level of Obi Wan going of of seeing the uh, trying to talk him down, moving into if you will not kill your father, then the Emperor has already yeah. won. That like somewhere that transition has to happen. Sure. And yeah, I don't think there's like twelve other times where they meet and Obi Wan's oh, like, yeah, "Come course. on, man!" Like, no, no, like, come but, on, let's do this again. I tried <laughs> yeah, the fifth yeah. time. Six <laughs> times the charm. Throw me a fucking bone, Anakin. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I, 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 oh, I love Vader in this show so much, and um, yeah, there's just that viciousness, and like, go all the way back to like the the canon Darth Vader comics, you know, where like how many times has Anakin had some like dark fucked up dream about Mustafar where he throws Obi-Wan into the lava. Like he's been ruminating on this for 10 years. And the second he got a chance, he lit this motherfucker on fire. Yeah. That was like, that, that, was incredible. that still shocked me. Holy. I just, it's one of those things where it's like, if you told me this would happen like 10 years ago, I wouldn't believe you. But like now that it's happened, it's like, no, this makes complete sense for Vader. This makes so much sense in character. And this is that brutality so many people have wanted from Vader. And like, you know, we, you know, Connor, you and I talked about it with Alden, you know, like everyone's like, you know, like the Darth Vader Rogue One scene in the hallway, you know, it's cool. It's great. It's brilliant. It's brutal. Uh, but that's just Vader doing his job. <laughs> right, right. Like, like that's just what it looks that like. That was business. That was business. This is personal. Exactly. And that's a difference. And that's a difference. Exactly. Yep. And, like, and, and, and that's what I, th- I think it also adds, like, there's, like, it, there's different types of terror with Vader. Like, Rogue One is what happens when you're just a bunch of guys with guns in, like, a space this wide. Right pinned down like the, like everything that's about to happen is the only thing that could happen in that version he's like your common dark boogeyman but with kenobi it, it's even it's worse like, it, it, he's just like it, it's like a freddy cougar type of like he's in his mind yeah. he's you know yeah physically in front of him just he's just tormenting him and toying with him um and it was really just incredible to watch to actually see it on screen because you you know as fans you always think of what it would be like or you know maybe you read it somewhere uh but to see it actually on screen and to actually see vader be as ruthless as you know it's always been talked about we just never seen it but to actually seen it was it really did blow my mind it was incredible and i think the show overall 
has done extremely well by Vader. I mean, this this it's the Vader that I think you know, as you talked about, every fan um, has has envisioned or what has has wanted to see, and I think the show has delivered one hundred percent on that on that vision. Absolutely, and like just to jump a little bit to like more Vader stuff. Uh, and then we can talk about the titular character, but I'm here for the real main character. Uh, like just that like brief moment we get from him in uh, episode four that came out today where he's like, he hasn't even completely crossed the hallway into like the war room. Oh yeah. Like, like he's still room. in the hallway yeah. by the time he like Riva into the air. And it's like, and it's, it's, it's little things. And like this Vader in so many ways feels like he was peeled out of the force unleashed, like in the body language and the way that he uses the force, like just the way that he, he wasn't even completely in the room yet. And not only did he pick Riva up, not only did he start forcing her, he did both. Like he grabbed her by the neck with the force and lifted her. And it's that like, and, and he's just letting her squirm up there while he's berating her. It's just everyone who is working on Vader, like the collaborative effort it is to bring Vader together. Like, I know there have been body doubles and stunt doubles so far in the Vader suit. Again, I think we're really going to see Hayden helmet comes off in combat. Uh, But everybody who's been working together to bring Vader to life has been doing an incredible job. Absolutely. And just blew me away. Uh, And while we're still talking about uh, episode three, I think one of the coolest things, you know, I love, I love stories like this. I love things like the last Jedi, like into the spider verse, you know, where your hero has to do the hero thing again and like learn what it means to be that symbol, to be that hero. And, uh, my I love the moment with the path mm. where yeah. he where like I think there's something that galvanizes the Jedi spirit into him again in that moment where he realizes like while you've been hiding and yeah you're doing the right thing you have a mission to look after Luke we've all been yeah. hauling ass and doing our part so that the galaxy has a fighting chance. Yeah, I think also like when he recognizes Quinlan Voss, right? I think that to me that kind of like signaled that Obi Wan realized, no, 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 you can still do your job as a Jedi and, and be a force for good and not be such and not be so reclusive in, in in doing so, especially when it pertains to his you know his charge of looking over luke it's like no you can still you know do good and and not expose yourself and there's other people out there that will help you because i he feels so secluded on tatooine i mean he's done that himself but i think he, he's realizing no not everyone hates the jedi there are people out there and i don't have to shut myself off from the rest of the galaxy or and and the force because you know, people are out there still doing good and doing good work, and I think he recognizes Quinlan Voss and and all the the path that all that symbolizes. So I think that was a big turning point in terms for Obi Wan to like switch gears and be like, okay, I need to reconnect and because it, it's eventually gonna pay off, you know, or starting to pay off in Chapter Four. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it's such a beautiful turning point. You know where he like he's like oh man I guess I I guess I got to put my Jedi pants back on <laughs> right You're like right. for real now don't I um, you know the little just... thing the the breather yeah oh yes yeah oh, that was phenomenal because when they showed him underwater I was like he's got to he's got to be using that thing right he's got to be the little aqua fire or whatever you want to call it whatever it's called and I wasn't sure were those Waladins like from those uh, old uh, you know. Jared, you know what I'm talking about, right? Those six books about like the Dark Prophet Kadan and like Ben's and uh, Ken. <laughs> Remember Ken and uh, Tri Tri Triclops and Trioculus or Triculus? Remember the that? Jedi Prince series? Yeah. yeah. 
Those were amazing. I got to text Michael the second we're done recording. Michael McCoy yeah. from All Remaining Systems. Michael, that is like Triclops and Trioculus are his favorite characters. <laughs> they're, they're, they're amazing. Like how he, Triclops has psychotic visions that like give him plans for Imperial War Machines. That's amazing. What have we I, unleashed? Like, I, yeah, we got to put you two in the same room. Um, <laughs> no, we don't actually. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we fucking do. Um, <laughs> But no, I know what you're talking about, Mike. I don't think it was though. I don't know. Well, wait, what moon was that? That was that was in Nerf. the boost bar system, right? Nur. What? Nur. Nur. Saying, yeah, Nur. Fortress Inquisitorius. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Nur is the name of the moon. Nur is a moon of Mustafar. Well, no, Mustafar itself was a moon. It orbited a gas giant. But I can't remember the name of the gas giant. If it was Justified or Lafrani, it was one of those, but I can't. So like it was it was that that's water, fire, <laughs> yeah, sand. Yeah. What are the other elements? Sand benders, water benders, fire benders, no, no, uh, earth benders, and air benders. So yeah. Obi Wan's gonna go to Cloud City next. And then he's gonna go to <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. He's gonna make a deal with Lando. <laughs> he's gonna make a deal with Lando. Um oh yes, childish, childish Landino is back, everybody. Yeah, he'll um, be in it. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, he'll be partnering, making a rap song with uh, Oshi, uh, uh, with Ice Cube Jr., and they're gonna. It's gonna be great. <laughs> you, Star Wars. You mispronounce Oshie, and yeah. I really thought like, you were talking about Oshie. I was like, Oshie. I thought like, you were talking about oh, Oshie. Oh, I don't know. I can't pronounce his name. I'm sorry. What, what, what's what's <laughs> No, I just thought you were saying Ochi, like the orange guy from Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Ochi and Child just can't be no. Yeah. Oh my yes. God. yes. The, the 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 Sith assassin who had like buttholes for eyes. Um, <laughs> but anyway, chapter four. Uh, unless anybody has anything else about chapter three. Uh, Fucking Fred. Oh, I, what a yeah. Th- mm. I, okay, well, sorry, one thing. Why did all the Jedi write their stupid names on the wall? Empires, that's going to be like a great shopping list for the Empire. You well, know, I mean, like, you, you got to know who's going where. You have to have some type of record. Why? And, the, and, and it's know. been hidden all this time. Let's Yeah. So, mind you. It's still there. I mean, yeah. true. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah, like, it's kind of like you're deaf. Like, only communicate with, like, hand signals. or. I, I do want to... <laughs> that's funny, no. but I, I do want to... Um, the whole uh, the laser gate... Um, oh, that kill! Oh, yeah. That whole, that whole, that that kill. First of all, was great, but then, but then to not walk around it was. That's what my sister said during we were watching. Why but here's, walk here's, there's, so this this show does a lot of things. Not a lot of things, but there's a few things where I go, I like the idea of this. I just don't agree with the execution, right? And or I think there's like another way to like work around it so it doesn't seem as silly or um, as you know doesn't work well together or it can work a little bit better in my estimation. And I always thought if, if they're going to shut off or if Obi-Wan's trying to shut down, you know, the gate, you know, it doesn't work. So then he's got to destroy it. It would, I thought, okay, okay, do that. But that's kind of silly. You could, you could have just walked around it, but I thought you could save that by adding another character moment for, for little Leia to saying like, it would be totally in her character to say, why couldn't we just walk around it? And then you have Obi-Wan just be like, well, yeah, that's true. But they just keep going. Instead, he destroys it as if that was the only way to get through it. And right. I was like, well, yeah. not a big deal, but it's like... Because then they do the whole top-down view. It's like, oh, yeah, you totally could have walked around that thing. I I think uh, Alex Damon, Star Wars Explained, said that like he was like, oh, they probably had landmines. Which, like, I always... He and I have the same very have the same mindset of like as the viewer when something you're like, well, you obviously could have done this, that there's probably a reason that like we don't see in the screenplay or that like that that when that when that an actor probably went, why don't we walk around it? And the director had an answer for it. Unless, of course, it's George Lucas, where they just go like, oh, well, (laughs) poetry uh <laughs> and then that's just how you fucking yeah, go you with go. it but it's, uh, it rhymes, it rhymes, it rhymes. It's, it's, it's just things rhymes you know. side note my one of my favorite george lucas things ever is the fact that he can't pronounce his own character's names Count um, he, Count the gungans they, they, they say the gungan. gungan doku quigan 
Yeah. Why? Not said all three yeah. of oh, those. Yeah, yeah. Not like behind the scenes documentaries. Yes, yes. And wow. it, it never makes me not laugh that like uh, that like he clearly directed his actors to pronounce them the way they say them. But yeah. he then chooses to pronounce them a different fucking way completely. It's probably some weird George flex that we haven't figured out yet. <laughs> right, right. No. The, but, um, I, you know what? Being John Malkovich is cool. Can someone please make being George Lucas? Oh, I would love wow. that. Yeah, I'd like to see inside of George's mind. Yeah, that could, <laughs> I could learn a lot of stuff. So I can see his American Graffiti 3 probably in there. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or THX 1139. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One, one, three, nine. Revenge of the THX. I just need. I just have two things to say about episode three. A, okay. where was Freck on Empire Day? Hey, I love Freck. Like, yeah, that man is the man. You call him man. No, it's a freaking mole. He's a mole rat, and not the good kind. Yeah, <laughs> he's not Rufus. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, all my homies hate Freck. I, is, uh, now, I actually stuffy. like him, but like, Wait, what was your other thing, Connor? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was just the line about, "Have you ever been afraid of the dark? And how does it feel when you turn oh, on the yeah, light?" Yeah. And then Leia goes, "I feel safe." And then she, and then he says, "Yeah, it feels like that." That was just perfect. I we got to have some sort of child analogy for the dark side, you know, like. You ever killed your enemy? It's like no. <laughs> well, it feels like you that. ever lit an ant on fire with a magnifying glass, kid? <laughs> yeah, that's and it. Boy, yeah. do I have the cult for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a cult for you, Step right up. All right. And then, sometime when I look at Luma, I see her mother's face. Oh, that like whole just, inter- that whole yeah, it was great. Just kill me, man. It was so Joby, stop. Just Joby, Hannah, everyone. Feeling. Those two. Stop. You're yeah, killing me, guys. Seeing the weight of everything on Obi Wan, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading into it too much uh, fr- from like my own perspective. But like, if I were Obi Wan, despite everything Anakin did and everything he became, like, that's still my brother. Right. And on some level, his failure to save Padme, even though he was trying to save Padme from him. Like how much that sings, like not only did you fail her and get her killed, you also failed your boy by allowing him to fall to the point where that happened in the first place. Like that, just like the compounding levels of, Oh God, I fucked up and everyone's dead and it's all my fault. And in, again, in that moment, with like when I look at her, I see her mother. Like, oh my god! Ugh. Every interaction that little Leia and Obi Wan have, like, it's I'm either adorable for, or heartbreaking. Uh, exactly, it's one or the <laughs> other. There's really no like in between, and it's just Only like Civ it's, deals it's in all absolutes. different, varying degrees of heartbreak. And it's just and this and I uh, forget I forget the actress's name. Um, but she is phenomenal. Like uh, Vivian, oh, yeah. something, Vivian something. Lynn something. Blair. Blair. Vivian yeah. something Blair. I can't remember uh, the middle Blair. name. She Blair. is she is really great. And uh, I'm Lyra glad. Blair. Ah. Vivian Lyra Blair. Uh, Leroy Jenkins. I, I thought she was going to be yes. done after like the first two episodes. She's going to go back to All Around. But I, I'm really enjoying the fact that she's probably going to be in every single episode. Uh, um which there's only two left now, but um, her and Obi Wan. I mean, that that is an interaction I never knew I wanted. So it makes me happy. I when I yeah, saw the rumors years, years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. It gives like obviously he's she's not referencing the Clone Wars service, but it just gives everything such a new meaning, which is kind of refreshing in a way. Like it's different than what I thought anything would ever be, but it is fascinating to see that new dynamic of. Obi Wan and Leia having a relationship, like because you know, like it's weird in that, like they never meet meet in uh, Episode Four, but now right. it's like kind of all okay. And yeah. and for all we know, they never meet after this again. You know, for right. all we know. So like, I do like that. This could be just one isolated incident, and and that's it. Um, but like I said, this is this was an interaction I never knew that I wanted because you always think you always you always 
um, attribute Obi Wan and Luke together as that relationship. Now you've I've never thought of. Oh, I wonder what Obi Wan and Leia were like. You know, it's always Obi Wan and Luke. Obi Wan and Luke, and so. To flip that That's on why its head. I loved yeah. what Bale said in the first episode yes, yes, when yes. he's like, oh, I gotta protect the boy. And then he goes, What about what about your duty to his She's daughter? She's just as important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm. It's like, damn, to his true. sister. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. And like, and I and I, I had been saying, like, whenever we realized that this show would involve Obi-Wan leaving Tatooine, you know, I I was like, okay, well, it has to involve Bale and Leia. Like it has to be that way. And then there were the rumors, but like finally seeing it, you know, it, like you said, Frank, it's just, it's just, an, it's, just, it's a dynamic and an interaction that you didn't realize you needed until you have it. And again, like it's just more of that world building glue. Like you're throwing, you're casting a line all the way from between episodes three and four, all the way to episode seven now. Yeah. With like, the fact that Han and Leia named their child Ben. Right. And and, and something else that I'm taking away from all of this with, with Leia is that I think potentially that like this whole interaction or this whole adventure for, for Leia at this point, at this stage in her life, I think like, because she's been just on Alderaan this whole time, she has not seen any part of the galaxy. And I think, you know, she's even someone on the side of the Empire in the beginning, you know, with he's like, ah, the Empire is supposed to be helping, right? But she sees this whole other side, and I feel like this is what, fe- this could fuel the the rebellion, Leia, and I think it's it's going to stem from this, and I think that's and I think that's really cool, and then you see her go on into A New Hope, and then obviously into Force Awakens and, and the rest of the sequel trilogy, but um, I feel like, oh, this might have been the moment or you know the adventure that really set her on the path of i'm not going to stand by you know like people need help blah blah blah. uh the empire is she's coming around to the empire at a young age scene they're they're not all what they're cracked up to be and um and because normally i think well not normally but i think bale is in the midst of creating a rebellion but it doesn't necessarily mean you want your daughter involved in it because it's a dangerous thing but of course perhaps this is what really lights is her spark right for her to join the rebellion and, and her have a, her play a part, which actually then plays in you know becomes General Leia. So uh, I think it's all really working for me. What's happening with Leia? I agree, and I think that you know I saw somebody, I saw it on Facebook, and it was somebody in like a Star Wars Facebook group, and they they meant this comment to be like incredibly pithy uh, when they were like. So I guess this means Leia had a deeper connection to Obi-Wan, yet she's the one consoling Luke uh, right after her planet got destroyed. And I went, yeah, because that's who Leia is. Yeah. <laughs> it even hits harder, actually, that she's consoling Luke because she's like, I like there's a part of her that knows what Luke is going to be missing out on because yeah. she got to spend time with Ben at, at, at some point in her life. That is a very good point. You know? I think it also lends itself to the fact that, like, in canon, we never see Leia question the whole idea that Luke is trying to be a Jedi. Like, everybody kind of goes, all right, you know, who's Space Wizard? Not Leia, because Le- Leia's seen one of these guys in action already. Yeah, yeah. Like, in, in, in Episode 4 today, she sees Obi-Wan, like, you know, redirecting blaster bolts behind himself to hit something from behind him. Like, she she's like, oh, yeah, this shit's legit. Yeah, you know, and it's because she watched Obi Wan wreck house in Fortress Inquisitorious, um, which great name, great name. It's so it, <laughs> dude. I've been saying this. I love it. The, I really the Inquisitors are my favorite part of the new canon. They seriously yeah, are. Yeah, yeah they're out like, there. It's just such a cool concept. Like, granted, I went with the whole Jared the Dark Jedi thing on Twitter and shit like a long time ago. Uh, but damn, am I happy that like the coolest thing about the new canon is an army of dark Jedi who are just like varying degrees of edge lords. Yeah, yeah, like, it's, they like, lords. yeah they're yeah. But, but it's on a gradient. It's on a gradient. You know, like there's some, you know, you got your classy edge lords of the Grand Inquisitor, and then you just have like, who is like, now dead? He's dead. 
He's not dead. <laughs> oh no, he's he's dead. We he you know right in the the stomach. There are some it. things far more frightening than death. He's fine. The writers even said we weren't going to break canon. We just had, you know. Yeah, took I don't think he's. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't think he's dead either. But he's it's, fine. It's, I don't know. I, I think he's dead. <laughs> Mike, I got bad news for you. He's not. <laughs> How do you know this? The writers <laughs> said we know he. He know he's supposed to show up in Rebels. He's not dead. They're all liars. It's about film is lies. Just how do you lie to people? How do you edit stuff so that you can bend the truth? He's dead. Or it's a different guy. The guy in Rebels looks like he's half starved. This guy, he's eating a nice big English breakfast. I mean, it's animated live action. I mean, he's dead. <sighs> okay, Mike. Um, <laughs> dead. I so first of all, awesome seeing Fortress Inquisitorius. Uh, I love the arc that these people with the path go on. Yeah. Um, you know, it feels like Luke. Feels like Finn. You know, with that. With that. A uh, whole idea of you're gonna have to fight eventually. Yeah, like you can only do so much yeah. on the sidelines until you either need to commit to the fight or get out of the way, or just completely walk away. Yeah, and you know that that Wade guy, he, you know, he 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 Wade. paid the price, but Wade. you and, know, but poor Wade. Just, but you know his sacrifice isn't in vain. You know what he just did. Like, without Wade, the first Death Star isn't destroyed. You know? Like, there's a whole lot of, like... There's the domino The whole butterfly effect of Wade must die. It's like that (laughs) reminds... Yeah, it reminds me of... uh, There's a baseball YouTube channel that just goes into just, like, this little error from Mm, this, like, random game propels this player, propels this team, like, 20 years later. I'm like, how? This is... This is the Star Wars version of that. Wade's death helps propel that was Rogue One and the destruction of the first Death Star. <laughs> it all, yeah. say, like, L-U-A-D-E. Yeah. yeah. But also, I gotta say, the there's like four things I really... Like, there's a lot of things I liked from this episode, but like the back-to-tank scene... When like it started, uh, I was like, mirrors, "All right, yeah." Like we're probably getting flashback here, and then it just went to just like, "Nope, we're just gonna cut between Vader and Obi Wan, and we're just gonna help have them wallow in their grief and yeah. misery." I like seeing their and I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think that was great. And then, I don't know, you probably thought of this too, Jared, when um, Obi Wan—I almost forgot his name for a second. When Obi Wan says. Where's Leia? And then it cuts to Fortress Inquisitorious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Automatically, I thought of where's Ray? Where's cut to? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to. Well, <laughs> I was going to go. I think it, that has oh. more in line with the. Where's, where's Han? Han? Smash cut to oh, the elevator opening too. on Kylo yeah. Ren, where it's Fair like, enough. oh yeah. I so that, and then that's the one uh, I thought of, but I also you. have I also have a tattoo of Kylo Ren, so that makes sense. True. That's where my mind went. And then, like I have the two bias. lines that killed me, because of because of Fallen Order, uh, the one person goes, "It's an it's impenetrable Wade." And then I think um, I, Tala yeah. goes, "Truth is, nobody knows what it looks like in there." And I'm just like, "Oh yeah, not entirely true." Uh, no, no, no. Let Let's have the full quote in there. No one's dumb enough to have tried. And I, <laughs> I, the, I. I don't know if that's the exact verbiage, but somebody says something to the effect <laughs> yeah. of no one was stupid enough to attempt to look or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. No, I have the quote yeah. here. Truth is nobody knows what it looks like in there. And I'm just like, mm, not entirely they, true. They say something like. about dumb enough. Something and that's like my fine. favorite part because <laughs> yeah, I can you... think of one redhead who was dumb enough. <laughs> um, yeah. And live to tell the tale. Which was uh, so clearly, cool. he's not in contact with anybody in the path. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't know that for sure. For sure, we just didn't see that part of the wall. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't. Uh, know. If he is, uh, Cal is not offering up vital information. <laughs> to well, I mean, if, really what if the path man. is part of Jedi uh, Survivor? You know, like what if that's something you encounter in the sequel? Oh, I really also, don't know. That uh, little scene. When it cuts to 
when it's just O'Shea, Obi-Wan, uh, Tala, and the other person. There's someone walking in the background. Oh, yeah. I just found this yep. out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Christine Ariel. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The timestamp is six six minutes, 17 seconds. That's when they're looking at the Real quick, hologram on the but, desk. Yeah, yeah. That was really she's cool. She's in That's Star really Wars cool. canon, everyone. Christina Ariel, the host Afro, of the High Republic said. show. She said, me and my Afro are canon now, and I'm very <laughs> happy for that. She just keeps winning, man, and I yeah, cannot help great. but be happy for her. I... So first of all, very surface level. I love Obi Wan's new outfit. Oh yeah, dude, same. So it much. gave me big Revenge of the Sith vibes. I like True. it. I like that it's. I I this is so 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 dumb, but like we see him in like the same colored robe all the time, where like it's that same like cream off white tunic, throughout the prequels and Clone Wars and the original trilogy, and he's wearing like a like darker like mm -hmm. grayish brown like what mace windu wears so like it's like it's almost like seeing obi-wan in like a player two outfit if that <laughs> yeah. makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah but, like, yeah it, well like <laughs> right. the road like the tunic it's the same cut and everything but like it's mace windu's shade of brown and it's it's like a stupid little detail like that where like yeah. this is forever going to be a version of obi-wan now right and i don't know this doesn't really make a difference or not but i can't help but wondering if that is from a like another jedi that perhaps you know died like that he's oh, that's, wearing that's definitely a dead person's shirt. right that's definitely so, a dead person's shirt but like like what like like the jedi is probably not super important but but I, i'm just curious oh, my, my thought was i wonder if that's like you know a jedi that's you know that he might have known or what have you doesn't really make a difference. That's just my own. No, no, no. I think it's interesting yeah. though. Well, because I thought the same thing. Where I'm like, oh, it's the Jedi Underground Railroad. Of course they have Jedi clothes. Yeah. <laughs> they are rescuing Jedi, so somebody That's doesn't need I that thought. shirt anymore. Oh no. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> they kind of slowly realizing, you know, uh, very, very baby shoes never worn. The thing I also really yeah. like the about this episode, and I didn't really. I noticed it on my first watch, but granted, I was on like three hours of sleep and I woke up at like 6 a.m. to watch this. Um, but on my rewatch. Why didn't you I, just watch it while you were awake then? Because I'd work. Hmm. But if you woke up, it's OK. I, I got I was I had a late night uh, with work literally the previous night. And uh, yeah, not fun, not fun. But um. The thing I really like about this episode is that we see Obi-Wan really trying to connect to the Force. Yeah. Real, not connect to it, but like sort of get his strength back in it. Yeah, yeah. And sort of get back into his Jedi ways. And there's that like moment of when all the lights go off in the torture chamber and he just turns on the saver. Yeah, because it was all like, dark before. and then the blue and then that uh, was... Yeah. Uh, it was beautiful. And that then um, another moment that feels very reminiscent of the Force Unleashed, because that was like the Force Unleashed 2 trailer. It's like Vader leaves Starkiller for his execution, and he still has his lightsabers on him for some reason. Uh, and then he uses the Force. He kills the lights. It's in TFU 2, so he has the blue lightsabers in the trailer. And it's him doing exactly that, only there's way more troopers. So he'd be like, cut them up, cut, turn them off. Boom, cut them up, turn them off. Yeah. And it like... It, this show feels like all the good things about The Force Unleashed, and I love it. Continue. I'm sorry. And I think another thing I really liked is, and it definitely was a direct reference um, to the same thing he does in A New Hope, where he like uses the forces real yes, quick. Yes. But in this, it felt like in in the one in this one in this episode of Kenobi, it felt like even for just a second, he really had to concentrate. And is still a bit rusty, but he's getting back into it slowly. I gotta say, so, also with him traversing the corridors, very Death Star-ish like, but also kind of the quote that immediately came to my mind when you see an Obi Wan make his way through the fortress is that you know when he tells Luke, he's like, "I'm getting too old for this kind of thing," and it's like because yeah, he's he's going into places and doing these little missions and I can't say missions. I can see Alec Guinness like. Uh, yeah. a little cubby <laughs> in the side of the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was just thought like this. This totally pertains to 
that at least for me i connected with you know when he tells luke i'm getting too old for this sort of thing you know i i can't keep you know because like in a new hope like everyone knows where his path is going where it's headed and so it's like eh, eventually you know luke is gonna you know he's gonna have to do this but it kind of like starts from here at least for him when he's when he re-engages you know in the, in the fight if you will uh, I thought that was just really cool to have that kind of a little bit of a foreshadow of this is what's going to be like for him on the Death Star, but different outcomes, obviously. Yep. And then well, he floods another... a section of Fortress Inquisitorius. Well, that's what I wanted to hit on with the whole, you know, the Force is like a muscle thing. You know, we see him struggle to catch Leia. We see him, you know, with like small focused bursts in use of the Force throughout these fat past couple episodes but here we see w- like a very impressive force feat mm-hmm. where like not only is he because if you watch not only is he like reinforcing the glass to stop the flood from starting he is not he's reinforcing the glass and then pushing past it to push the water also yeah, onto the other panel of yeah. glass so like he like like that is a multi prong like he's moving the water while for like reinforcing the glass. That that would have been impressive regardless of how out of practice he was. While so, he's like, being shot at, yeah. <laughs> while he's yeah. being shot at, you know, and like there's a and it, I I noticed this and I thought it looked a little silly. It looked a little poorly edited, um, but I saw somebody kind of explain it on Twitter, and I like this explanation, but I still think they could have blocked it a little bit better is whenever Obi-Wan's dealing with the probe droid and then the stormtroopers, uh, that, like, after he takes it down, he goes to do, like, a little Jedi spin and kind of, like, stops halfway and just kind of forgets where he is and then goes over to get Leia. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that just seems kind of weirdly edited, where he just kind of seems like he's going, ooh, ooh, ooh for a minute. Uh, and somebody on Twitter was like, Obi-Wan got so... Something to the effect of Obi-Wan got his was, was like so impressed with himself and started to show off and went oh shit i gotta save this kid <laughs> um, that's that's a very obi-wan of him but you know it really is how obi got the got his force back um brian right. board get on that uh <laughs> I have that to interrupt. Sure. i'm thinking i was thinking more about your and spencer's deduction that the force is like a muscle and i disagree i've decided i disagree it's not about lifting rocks oh damn here we go it's not that nice. You're right. You're right. It's not about lifting rocks. Making until it, it is like a muscle is that that's the same. That no, I, just that you're out of practice. You're not as in tune with it as you normally are. You don't have to practice to use the force. It's not it either. Well, no, but there's also a metaphysical element to it. Any 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 physical, like it affects your body. Like that's why Luke dies in the Last Jedi. Is it like his body gives out because it is an incredibly difficult force feat. On because top he of his age, he knew he didn't have to do anything anymore. No, it was. I don't think he chose to die. I think it's he a chose. matter of the fact that he has not used the force in a ma- major way, and however, in however many years, his old age, and like the intensity of the act. I think he knew it would kill him. Oh, for sure. But I don't think Kylo, he Kylo, chose Kylo, to Kylo Ren let it. sets that up. Kyle Ren sets that up. Exactly. So, like, if he knows kill something you. like that would kill you, then then Luke would surely yeah. know. Like, I think Luke yeah. Luke in his prime, who is like actively using the Force, I think he could do it no problem. But I think that there comes a point where like lifting rocks, not so much as like force physical, like a physical muscle, like it's all about lifting. Uh, in, but insofar as if like like I used to do Taekwondo. You know, I I built up certain muscles doing that and those muscles don't fully go away. My calves look fucking weird for the rest of my life because I got like kicker legs. But you know, like I don't have the kicker legs I had when I did Taekwondo. You know, like the muscle and, I'm, and, I, and when I say muscle, it's not so I don't want it to sound like it's all like lifting, moving the, the physical element. Yeah. But you know, you can't jump back in to something that does require physical exertion at the level you used to do it if you haven't done it in forever. Sure. I used to yep. go to the gym all the time. I can't deadlift what I deadlifted three years ago 
jumping right into my pinnacle when I did that at the time. Like it's like, there's a level of like physicality that comes right, with right. it that like, but it's coming back quickly for Obi-Wan that like we went from, he couldn't hold his own against Vader for even a split second was struggling to catch Leia to now he's like warping the force around the fortress inquisitorious in all of these ways. You know, like I, that, that's always been the way I interpreted it. Uh, like the force in general. And I'm very, I'm very much enjoying how I, I, I feel like the shows into uh, or in step with my interpretation. Yeah, but that's your interpretation. It's not necessarily how it is. And again, it's not about lifting rocks. You're still making it like it's an ability that has to be constantly honed. And I don't think it is that. I mean, it's about life it, itself. It's about the it, energy between life, binding everything together. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's where you get like the, the cosmic force and like the nature of the force as it binds things together. But here we're talking about how the Jedi commune with and get in tune with the force and manipulated in the world around them which again i think is kind of force user dependent you know again look at luke he couldn't survive the force projection but like his first real force feat after turning it back on he shatters that whole hut because he's a fucking skywalker he's the son of the chosen one like there's a force potential he has that like you kind of can't get around but in any case uh obi-wan's getting his groove back slowly but surely um if i have one tiny gripe with the episode is that i think we missed out on just a little bit of obi-wan v reva sure i was expecting that i was sort of expecting that to happen like i think, yeah, I think I was, there was I'm room for him Jared. to be like you know get leia and, he, and him to just come at her and like i think it would have been now we don't know where the show is going to go from here, but I think it could have been a cool moment to show that Obi Wan is getting like back into the swing of things by showing him being able to hold her to, to hold her off. Yeah, you know, like is she Vader? No, of course not. But showing him going from last week getting his ass handed to him, just no contest absolutely gets his ass whooped to holding his own against an inquisitor and probably beating her to a certain extent insofar as she did not kill him and he got away. I think it would be, I think it would be a nice step in the right direction of this, sh of this episode showing he's getting back in the saddle. Like Jedi master Obi-Wan Kenobi is not back yet, but he's on his way. I, I do think I I mean I, I I mostly agree with that, but also at the same time I think it's hard to get in a confrontation with Riva at that particular place because it's like was well, everyone just gonna stand around and watch this happen? Like no, I mean like Vader's gonna have time to get over there and troopers can go over there and they can you know um, you know we call it take prisoner of Obi Wan whatever. So it's like it's I think it's tough to do it or at least a meaningful one in that setting. But I do think like. Then these next few episodes, I got to I got to imagine that Obi Wan and Reva come to blows, and then Obi Wan, you know, I got to imagine comes to blows with Vader. So like, yeah. there's a lot that I think like, and maybe they don't even Reva and Obi Wan. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. So that would um, be interesting if they don't. I know because like whenever they were saying like well, Vader well, isn't here yet, I that's why. I mean, that was another reason why I like whenever he shows up and starts force choking her. Yeah. Because there's just such a level of like he shows up just in time to like see that shit is on fire, and for some poor imperial to be like, so while you were gone, um, <laughs> Kenobi <laughs> broke in, right, <laughs> and then that guy gets his neck snapped. <laughs> right. The thing I, 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 there was a Reddit co oh this just reminded me there's a Reddit comment I saw on. I can't remember what subreddit. I'll just read it. If I had a nickel, if I had a nickel for every time a Jedi infiltrated Fortress Inquisitorius to rescue someone, I'd have two nickels. 
which <laughs> isn't a lot. But it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not bad. That's, That's not bad. very true. <laughs> and I'm sure Vader's having that same conversation with somebody as well. He's like, He's okay. like what did we do wrong? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will say real quick, I think, I don't, now that I think about it out loud, I don't think Reva and Obi-Wan are going to come to blows. I think Reva, because her gripe's not really with, obi-wan i think and i think it's he's just a means to an end for her and in terms of garnering favor with vader but i think reva and the grand inquisitor who's not dead that's who she will end up going to blows with ultimately um how that turns out i'm not sure although if there is a second season then she probably lives if there is only one she season only one, she probably dies i don't want to trill a 2.0 oh yeah I I agree with I don't want to trill a 2.0, especially with Reva, because I like her as a character a lot so far. Yeah. Um, I am slowly moving over to the school of thought that proposes that Reva has a grudge with both Obi-Wan and Vader. And that she's that little girl we see in the temple in the flashback in the very yeah. beginning of the show. And that since she was present, she saw Anakin. And because Anakin is such a prolific figure within the order, like she knows who that fucking is, you know, and she knows who trained him. And I think that she probably is smart enough to put together. Yeah. Who's in that suit. And I, I think it would be, I think it would be interesting if her whole thing is, I want to kill Kenobi because he facilitated this monster even existing. And then I'm going to get close to Vader and then I'm going to kill him for what he did to me. Like, yeah, I, think, I think, I think she might be, cause I've seen some people saying that like versions of that, where it's more like she wants to avenge the Jedi. I don't think she had gives a rat fuck about yeah. the Jedi. I don't like, I think this is about, her and her hurt and her trauma and her wanting retribution for it the whole scene or the whole interaction that reva has with leia and the interrogation and all that that just further highlights all the trauma reva has had because she's pouring it all onto little leia like uh you know this can all be over blah 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 you know you want it and and if you're not going to tell me what I want, I'm going to, I'm going to interrogate you. I'm going to torture you. You know, like Reva was maniacal in how she was talking to Reva or Reva was talking to Leia. And so I felt like all of her childhood trauma was being thrusted onto Leia, yeah. the way she was talking to her. And it's just, and it was just very, I thought the most insightful so aspect we've seen too. about Reva up to this point um, and her interaction with 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 Lil Leia and how she tried to get into her mind and Leia's you know resistant and I know some people thought like all oh, Reva knows that Leia is force sensitive that doesn't mean that right so yeah plenty of people have been interrogated and have have strong minds or whatnot or strong will and able to withstand a certain yeah. amount doesn't mean you know they're strong with the force or they're force sensitive or what have you um, Plus, but that all aside force sensitives you just aren't good with certain abilities right you know maybe reeve is just a shit telepath <laughs> you know like maybe on some level like this is not a talent she has which makes her cunning more fascinating on a certain level uh but uh mike you haven't talked in a moment your thoughts on this episode you mean like with like i don't know is T forty sevens were cool. Seeing oh the, yeah, when they mentioned the T forty seven, yeah, yeah, it was good. All right, well, I think that's all we have uh, for this week. Um, you know, it's wild the way that uh, the rollout of this series has gone. You know, we got we we got the first two episodes in one night, followed by the next three episodes a matter <laughs> yeah. of days later. Uh, and we are we we are, we are in the home stretch, uh, as a friend of Frank's likes to say, the penultimate yeah. episode uh, is upon us next Wednesday. And man, shit's getting real. Shit's getting real, real. Uh, so yeah, 
uh, Frank, where can the lovely people find you and what you do, assuming they aren't already? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, first and foremost, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at FrankieJ29. I also co-host the Schmodown Rundown, the official after show of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Uh, you can find that on YouTube at uh, Movie Trivia Schmodown. It's, we have a bunch of... We have like four divisions, singles, teams, inner geekdom, a bunch of geek movies, MCU, DC, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Swashbuckling Adventure, all that stuff, if you're into that. We also do have a Star Wars division, which uh, you can get via Patreon, at least for the current season. There's other past episodes of Star Wars division match play that you can find on that, on the Schmodown channel. So uh, if that's your fancy, you want to dive into some Schmodown or Star Wars trivia, that's a good place to go. Absolutely. Uh, if you guys have been listening to anything revolving around the uh, Nerd Academy, what we do around here, uh, I like the Schmodown a lot. Uh, the number one contender, our Schmodown podcast. Frank has been on uh, a few times. Contender will be coming back either this week or next week. Travis and I got to get caught up. It's been busy. Uh, and I have to... Uh, well, Travis will be looking forward to talking about the most recent Inner Geekdom title match. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, well, c- congrats to the Smasher. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I can't. These are one of those times where, like I can't even. I can't even do the bit. I can't right. even How do the bit you? with a straight face. Like I can't. It's, it's it's Matt's. Kevin after yeah, everything exactly. that's happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, if as I said, if it's going to be anybody, it better be him. Uh, so yeah, go go watch the Schmodown and all the cool stuff Frank does um with it uh mike friend where find you at the did 415 on twitter mike doling on facebook and mike or Durling 415 on instagram would you like to do that again no. just because you got eaten up a little bit uh you got cut off at the beginning. did 415 on twitter mike doling on facebook and mike or Durling 415 on instagram yep yes go do it. Go find Mike. Mike is fun. Uh, I still will never get over Darth Ed. It's just such a fun name. Uh, Connor, where? Uh, Twitter, Depa Banana. I talk Star Wars and be horny. Um, <laughs> you can also I find mean, me. You can say that it doesn't have to be said. We just automatically know. <laughs> <laughs> That's everyone. Sometimes it's guys. Every, so. Everybody just like tweet. <laughs> everyone is. Everyone. Everybody everybody find uh, your favorite picture of Ava Sakura and just tweet it at Connor. And me, for that matter. I got a new obsession. <laughs> Not obsession. I got a new crush. Um, She's in this show. Um, really? uh, you can also find me. Uh, Where else? Oh. The fucking Magamole guy. Fucking Frick. <laughs> I couldn't remember his name. I kept wanting to say Frick, and I knew that wasn't right. I mean, you're not wrong. Where's that man for Empire Day? Let's be real. That's the question I got to know. That's the answer I got to know, man. Dude, no, dude you can has also a Stormtrooper find... Lives Matter flag on his truck. <laughs> Hand painted, too. Um, um, No, you can also find me... Uh, at another Star Wars podcast I co-host called For the Republic, a love letter to Star Wars animation. We talk Star Wars animation. We're chronologically going through the Clone Wars right now very slowly. Uh, we're not even halfway through season one. Like, we're just not. It's going to... Ta- Dude, we're going to finish Clone Wars in, like, 2024. <laughs> like, it's just going to take forever. Um, is, it, is it one episode... Oh, oh no no we do the art we do arcs we do, arcs? Okay, we do it by okay. arcs okay. but it just takes forever and just sure. we can't figure out schedules yet um you can also find me at sweditorig.com i write articles and i tell stories i don't have any stories published yet but there are stories up on that website we kind of just do our own thing with star wars we have a whole fan universe created i work with a great creative team we, all, we add to the canon of Star Wars while also sort of keeping to it. It's really fun. Go check us out. I have some stories in development. You can figure out who they're about. I, It's not that hard to figure yeah, out. If you've been around here for a little bit, uh, it's not a hard. certain redheaded Jedi who is dumb enough to try. 
Yeah. Jared. Yes. Where can they find you and the Nerd Academy podcast? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at DarkJedi2552. And you can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com, where if you're feeling generous, you can donate to our Patreon. Give me a dollar! Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our $10 alumnus, Nick Johnson. <laughs> and Paco, or as he's going by on the Patreon currently... <clears throat> you get 5% off your order if you use code TNAP at saveinfowars.com. That's code TNAP at saveinfowars.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, every time someone is on, and I have to explain that, all of that after the no, show. No, no, I get it. I get it. It's just. That, it's incredible. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. There, oh. There's more context to it, but it's suffice it to say. Uh, guys, we'll be finishing up prequel month on Nerd Academy Movie Club uh, this week, so keep your eyes out for that. Our episode about Revenge of the Sith. We're not sure what we're going to be doing for June yet. Might take June off for Movie Club and come back in July. We'll see what happens with that. Can our Versus series this month is going to be Revenge of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker versus Mandalorian Season 2 with Soka Tano. So tune in for that. Last month was Kylo Ren versus Cal Kestis. Lots of Cal in this episode. Um, so yeah, go check all that out. We'll be covering Ms. Marvel and The Boys on the Nerd Academy main show. And like I said earlier, we'll be back with number one contender very, very soon. Uh, so with that, thank you all so very much for joining us. Uh, we'll be, we're honored that you have joined us. Uh, thank you, Frank, for coming by. Always great to have you Thanks on. Thanks for having me. Uh, been too long, especially because we are so hysterically behind on number one contender. <laughs> uh, so yeah, with that, thank you all for watching and listening. And may the force be with you always. <laughs>